Hello, my beautiful, lovely people. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another series of the principles of prayer. Welcome, welcome. And if this is your first time, is this your first time watching? Please like and subscribe, and then hit the notification bell so you know each time I upload a video. I pray that you be blessed by the content that I share on this channel. Um, right now, we are in series seven on the principles of prayer. So I pray that it blesses you. So, and this uh, series is on give me a praying spirit. Give me a praying spirit. So I'm gonna go right on, right ahead. I'm gonna go right ahead, go right ahead and um, lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ, rule of all things. Lord, I honor you. I give you praise and thanks, Lord. I thank you for giving me a mind to come on here and share the principles of prayer series seven with your beautiful, lovely people. Thank you for touching your your um servant of God, your servant Jacqueline Bell to write this book on the principles of prayer. I thank you for touching her, Lord, to bless your people. And now you have blessed me to share the material with the people on my channel, Lord. I pray that they be blessed by Lord Jesus. I pray that it help them and it strengthen them in their prayer life, that it draws them closer to you, Father. Lord, I pray and ask that you touch my mouthpiece. That you let flesh decrease as you increase, Lord. Rebuke every abnormal condition right now in my body in the name of Jesus. Bind the hands of the adversary in the mighty name of Jesus. Bind every attack, every stronghold in your mighty name, Jesus. Touch your people on today, Father. Lord, send healing and restoration to their body in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, yes, this is series seven. And we're going to get right into it. Because I, um, and I was getting ready to get on here. I was having like some complications, a problem, um, people calling. And so I have do not disturb on my laptop, but my phone, like my phone is kind of connected, you know, calls go to my laptop. So I pray that there'd be no interruption. If so, I'm going to just have to just, you know, decline the call. But I need to get this out, you know. And so, Sirius said, and give me a praying spirit, and um, let me show y'all the book for those of you, if this is your first time watching, this is the principle, it's called The Principles of Prayer, a teaching manual using a systematic approach to prayer, and it's written by um, my late pastor, um, Bishop Rafa Bell, his wife, Jacqueline Bell, she wrote a book, The Principles of Prayer, you know, to, to help you, show you how to pray, and this is her picture. And then for those of you, um, you want to buy the book, it's on Amazon. You can purchase the book on Amazon. It's $15. But for those of you who can't purchase the book, that's okay. I got you because we're going to, I have a book right here and we're going to read through this. But if you still want to get the book, it's okay. So we're going to go right into it. And it says, this is in, the introduction. It says, what is the spirit or more accurately, who is the spirit? The answer to this question help to sustain why and how a believer prays in the spirit the spirit the holy spirit the holy ghost or his spirit are all synonym terms these terms all refer to the spirit of god the spirit of god is god himself the spirit is the spirit of truth and he is the comforter who comes alongside a child of god and helps them take it from this life to heaven John 15 and 26. According to Proverbs 20 and 27, mankind was created with a human spirit. This is distinct from yet related to the Holy Spirit. Once an individual is born again or born from above, according to John 3 and 5 and Acts 2 38, this person now have a new and dwelling life-giving divine spirit that now is linked to the Holy Spirit. As can be gleaned from Mark 2 and 22, we receive a new supernatural spirit, new wine skin, which is then filled with the infinite, the infinite Holy Spirit, new wine. And there's going to be like a lot of scriptures I'm going to be calling out, but um, don't just, don't try to write them down as you're watching this. You can probably want to come back to this. I mean, after you watch it, you can come back and then rewrite the scriptures because it's a lot of scriptures and a lot of word knowledge that's in, in here but um it's going to bless you so i just wanted to mention that having the abiding presence of the holy spirit within one mortal body would enable the believer to pray in the spirit which is praying in tongues 
See Acts 2, 1 and 4. Through prayer and through prayer and tongues, the believer can pray the perfect will of God concerning any situation. Prayer in the spirit can also occur in one native language, which when the when that prayer is inspired, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The divine spirit can serve as a conduit through which the soul can be transformed daily by the Holy Spirit as the believer prays in the spirit. Once a person is spirit-filled, they automatically have a praying spirit. So you have to be born again. You have to have um, you have to have Christ. You have to have the spirit of you have to have the spirit of God in order to you know you uh, you praying in the spirit. But I do want to say, don't let that discourage you. Don't let that discourage you if you don't have the gift of the you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. You don't have that gift yet. Don't get discouraged. Keep praying. Keep praying because as you praying, you praying, you taking baby steps. God can come in and He can fill you. He can fill you with His with His Spirit. You know, if your heart is right, your heart is in the right place of of repentance, of receiving Him, believing. Um, that's what happened to me before I got saved. Um, before I got saved, you know, I was just still just kept praying, kept praying, kept seeking Him until one day I repented and um. God, he came in and he filled me with his spirit. So I just want to encourage you, for those of you, don't get discouraged if you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Keep praying. Keep praying. Because like the scripture says, it's, it's, the scripture, I believe, is in Acts. He said, it is unto you, it's to you, you and your children. So no one is a zip, you know. No one is a zip. He said, all, you know, it's for all. You know, if you believe, if you believe with your whole heart, you believe with your whole heart that he died on the cross for your sins and you repent. You repent, you turn away from um you turn away from your sin your sinful life and allow God to come in, you know, and fill you with his Holy Spirit. You can you know, you can you can get his spirit and you can be praying in the spirit. But do not get discouraged. You can take babies that continue still keep praying. But this is some this is some word knowledge, just some knowledge for you. So when you do get his spirit, you know you know this. You know this already. You know this already because you've been fed with the knowledge. You know, you can come back to this video and I have a I created a playlist uh playlist and it's called prayer tools for those you know if you miss you you watching this video for your first time but you didn't watch the other series one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You can go back and watch those and see my playlist. So if this is your first time coming across this video. You know, um, don't get discouraged. And if you don't understand, you know, don't get discouraged. Keep praying. Keep praying. And it says the divine spirit can serve. Let's go back. Having the divine presence of the Holy Spirit. Will, no, I think we read that. What do we leave off that? Praying in the tongues, believer can pray the perfect will of God concerning any situation. Prayer in the spirit can also occur. One, I don't think we read that. Okay, so we write Holy Spirit as a believer prays in the spirit. Once a person, once a person is spirit filled, they automatically have a praying spirit because they have the same spirit that compelled Jesus who always prayed. Outline one. Praying in the Spirit is a prayer that enables the, the power of the Holy Ghost to inspire, guide, energize, maintain, and help us to do battles in our prayer. Many church leaders have failed to teach this important doctrine to believers, even though it is mentioned at least three times in the New Testament. Romans chapter 8 verse 26, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, and Jude chapter 1 and 20. Praying in the Spirit principle, principle 1. Being born of the Spirit. First, you must be born of the Spirit. John chapter 3, verse 1 and 8. How to receive the Holy Spirit. Repent, repentance. Acts 2 and 38. You must have the in, the intel evidence of the Holy Spirit, which is speaking in tongues as God enables. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. You are not a son of God without the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, 11, 4, and 6. True worship is in the spirit. John chapter 4, verse 22 and 24. Uh, outline 2. Speaking in tongues, a heavenly language given by God. This language comes from heaven. John 1, 32. Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 2 and 1 Peter 1 and 12. 
this language out to be spoken daily. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 through 4 and 18. This language is under the influence of the Holy Spirit, bypass the brain and human thought. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 and 15. And I do want to mention, since we, we're talking about, we on outline too, and we're talking about speaking in tongues and we're talking about the heavenly language and for those of you might have some questions you might say where is that what is that and so once you get born again you get god's spirit and so then now you're able to um now you as the spirit of god gives you utterance you're able to like um speak in tongues you're able to speak in tongues you might say well I don't know. I hear people, they be saying, I don't know what they're saying. No, you're not going to understand what this is. We don't. We don't. You're speaking. You don't know what you're saying. But it's a heavenly language. It's a heavenly language that you're speaking that only the Father knows. It's, between. It's, like, it's like a communication line between you and the Father. You and the Father. You're speaking and then it's the Father. Sometimes I might be in, sometimes I might be in prayer. And I'm praying and then it's a prayer in the Spirit. You know, and sometimes, you know, I can just hear it in my spirit, you know, it's like the whole speaking back to me. I can just hear him speaking back to me saying, I understand. I understand. Like I could be crying and then I could be praying and speaking in tongues and speaking in the spirit. And it's just like God is just like he like it's like he give me like clarity, like, you know, how I'm feeling, like how I'm feeling. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but you might not know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, Melissa. I'm here. I'm here. I understand. I am here. So it's like you're speaking. It's a heavenly, heavenly language. It's a uh, communication. It's a communication. It's between you and the heavenly Father. You know, and it is a scripture. It is a scripture on this. I believe it's in Corinthians, and it's talking about there are some people are gifted with interpretation of tongues. You know, so um, for those of you, I know you might ask questions like, you know, what is that? You know, I hear people in church sometimes, and I don't be knowing what they're saying. You know, it's nothing to be afraid about, be scared, you know, is, I want to say that the best way I can paraphrase this, I can put this, is like, if you think of a song, if you think of a song, and you're listening to this song, and I'm not talking about anybody's song, worldly song, you know, I'm talking about a song, you think of a song, but this song got uh, joy in it, it got peace in it, like when you hear it, it's just ministering to your spirit, it's ministered to your spirit. So that's how it is with me. Now, I don't know if they, I, I'm just saying for me. For me, I'm using me, for example, it's like when you're praying in the spirit, it's like you, you speak in a heavenly language, but it's God is ministering to me. He's ministering to me, you know. So that's the best way I could put it. I just want to add that in there for case you, some of you, you might ask the question. Um, outline three, intercede in prayer. Sometimes we don't know what to pray for or how to pray. The Holy Spirit is involved in our intercession. The Spirit knows the mind of God and can pray his, his will. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 24 and 34. Christ intercede for the believer in heaven. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. And the Holy Spirit intercede within the believers on earth. On, on earth. And I believe we talked about this on uh, intercede, uh, intercede, an uh, intercessor, and serious, serious. I'm trying to see, was it serious? Five? It might have been, but we talked about this on intercessor, intercessor prayer as an intercessor. I don't know, it was five. It might have been serious bad. And so, then it says, um, outline four. Outline four. Spiritual weapons. We are in a spiritual battle, and the devil and his demons are our spiritual foes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. The believers warfare against Satan's spiritual forces call for an intensity in prayer. Spiritual warfare is fighting against evil spirits' forces, whose intent is to hinder us from receiving all of the promises of God. Praying in the Spirit is an instrument of offense and defense designed for destroying the enemy and protecting us from his attack. And that's why I said, you're praying in the Spirit. Because when you're praying in the Spirit, the devil don't know what you're saying. 
He don't know what you are saying. That's why I guess the spiritual weapon when you're praying in the spirit. He don't know what you're saying. It's because it's you and it's you and the Father. It's you and the Father. He don't know what you're saying. He don't know what you what you and your father what what y'all it's like a communicate. You and your father, you talking. You're talking, but it's a heavenly language, and you just going with your father. And the enemy is like, what is they saying? What is she saying to him? What is they saying? You know? And so that's why they always say it's good. That's your prayer. You know, that's one of your um that's one of your weapons. Like when you're praying in the spirit, you go in prayer, you know, that's your weapon. Prayer is your weapon. And so, um, it said the believer warfare against Satan's spiritual forces call for an intensity in prayer. Spiritual warfare is fighting against evil spirits, forces. Who intent is to hinder us from receiving all of the promises of God? Praying is a spirit. Praying in the spirit is an instrument of a, of offense and defense designed for designed for destroying the enemy and protecting us from his attack. Outline five: The spirit brings revelation. It is only through the Holy Spirit that God's truth and wisdom are revealed to humanity. Second Kings chapter six, verse fifteen to seventeen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 14. The Holy Spirit fully knows the thoughts of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 11. And then outline 6. Praise and magnifying God. Speaking in tongue can involve praise and magnifying God. Acts chapter 2, verse 11. Acts chapter 10, verse 46. God dwell in the midst of praise. Praise usher us into his presence. Psalms chapter 22 and 3 in Psalms 104 outline 7 builds faith it's the believers in it's the believers individual responsibility to edify themselves in their faith through prayer in the through prayer in the holy ghost in Jude chapter 1 and 20 we are admonished to pray in the holy ghost as a remedy to the end time apostasy Prayer and the Spirit may be prayer in your native language with the Holy Ghost providing direct and relationship, revelation as you pray. It may also be prayer in an unknown tongue where the Holy Ghost bypasses your brain and mind and you do not understand what you are saying as I stated before. Either way, this type of prayer is supernaturally empowered and is always in accordance with the will of God. Praying in the tongue will cause your faith to come alive and boldness and supernatural power. Today, be filled with the Spirit every day. Be refilled with the Holy Spirit. I want to say that again. Today, be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Every day, be refilled with the Holy Spirit. And I do want to mention for those of you, if you already have His Spirit, you can get your refilling at home. But those of you who feel like you always have to be at church to get you, it's nothing wrong with you can be at church to get your refilling. But in my walk with Christ, you know, I have learned because I got saved at home. I got saved at home in my bedroom. Um, my mother was there. And uh, for those of you, um, I did a video on that. It's called My Salvation Story. You you get a chance if you want to. You would like to know how, you know, um, how did I get born again? I share my my salvation story. Um, I might try to put create a playlist so you won't have to go through all the videos. But it's called my salvation story, and so I have learned that there was times when I wasn't able to get to the church. God showed me exactly way how you received me, exactly way how you received me, and you got filled with my spirit. You can get your refilling the same way. You got saved in your bedroom. You can get your refilling at home. Exactly the same way. Go back to that place when you first received me, Melissa. When you first received me, you received me in your bedroom, on your knee, uh, in your bedroom. I came in and I filled you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost in your bedroom. So I just want to encourage you, for those of you who feel like you might say, Oh, I haven't been to church in a while and I probably need a refilling. I probably need a little touch up. I need some restoring. Get in your prayer closet. Get in your prayer closet and begin to pray. Just pray. Pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying until you refill your uh until you get a refilling. You just keep on thanking him, saying thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. You keep on exactly the same way when you first receive him. Think about when you first receive him. Think about when you first got born again. Go back to that place. 
Go back to that place when you first received him. There's a song and it said, take me back, dear old Lord. Take me back to the place where I first received you. So you have to go back to that prayer closet and ask God, Lord, take me back to that place where I first received you. Take me back to that place, Lord. And you have to go to your prayer closet. Go to your prayer closet and get your refilling. You don't have to wait till you get to church and wait on the altar workers to come and work with you. No. You can go in that prayer closet. Now, we did this in series one. In series one, we talked about how back in those day and time, we had a priest. We had, it was the, there was a priest. We had to wait every year. They said year after year to go to the priest to confess our sin. So now we don't have to go to the priest anymore because Jesus, because Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And so now that we can go boldly to the throne of grace, we can go to God anytime, in our prayer closet anytime, and pray and repent anytime. We don't have to wait till next year to go confess our sin. We can go Christ died on the cross for our sin. He made a way. He made a way for us. Like, you know what? For my people, they can come to me personally. They can come to me direct. You know, they don't have to wait till a Sunday or this, you know, or make an appointment with a pastor. They can come boldly to the throne of grace. They can talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, wherever they at. They can talk to me at work. They can talk to me as they're riding in the car. They can talk to me. They don't have to wait. So I just want to mention this. For those of you, you feeling like you're saying, Melissa, um, you know, I used to be that person. I used to be on fire for God. It's not too late. It's not too late for you to go back and get read on fire for God. Like it says, today be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. We need to be refilled every day. Every chance that we get to pray, we need to be refilled. Just like you're driving a car and you feel your car getting low on gas. What do we do? We go and we go fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. Make sure our tank is full. That's how we have to be of children of God, we're walking around here with his spirit, and if we feel that our spirit is low, we feel like our oil the ran low, go get a refill, and we need to fill it up, fill it up, we need to fill up our temple, refill ourselves, it says every day, every day, not every, I mean, wait till Sunday, or this, that, every day, every day, so every chance that you get to go to your prayer club, you need to be refilling it up every day. Okay, we are almost finished. This is the summary. I just want to share that with you all. Because I know there might be so many people. And they might feel like um, I have drifted away from God. And I just don't want to go back into a church. Like, I just don't want to go back to a church right now. I just want to go into church. You know, be encouraged. I want you to, you to be encouraged. And just because you can't, you don't feel like you want to go back into a church. You can still, don't make that excuse. You have a prayer closet, get in your prayer closet and pray. Get your refilling. You want to stay refilled. Stay connected to God. Stay connected with God. Whatever you go through in life, feel stay connected to God because that's your power source. You know the Holy Spirit, it leads you and it guides you. But when you're disconnected, when you're disconnected, you're disconnected, you drifted away and you get into some trouble. You walking through some some dark valleys. You're walking through some dark valleys and God is saying, come on back. Come on back to the ark of safety. I need you to come back to the ark of safety. You done drifted off. You done drifted off and now you're walking down some dark valleys. Now, I just come on back to me. All I need you to do, come on back to light. Come back to the ark of safety. So I want to share that with you all. And as we get ready to close this video, I'm going to read the summary and it reads, praying in the spirit, pray. Praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit and the Holy Ghost, and praying in tongues are synonyms. Are synonyms in order for one to pray in the Holy Spirit. One must have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence of speaking in tongues. We talked about this earlier. Speaking in tongues is the heavenly language given by God to pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit enables the power of the Holy Spirit to inspire us in the things of God, guide us in our Guide us in our walk with God, energize our spirit with spiritual strength, and help us engage in spiritual battles in prayer. And that is the end, y'all. This is um serious set. This is serious seven. Um, a praying spirit. So um, I pray that you all was blessed by um 
was blessed by this series, series seven. And so series eight, be on the lookout for that video. I might upload that video tomorrow. It is titled, Give Me, Give Me a Praying Spirit. Give me a prayer spirit. So that's all, y'all. And I'm going to close this out in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I magnify your name. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise, Lord. I thank you for those who are watching these videos and those that come across this video. Lord, I pray that you bless them, Lord. I pray that you bless them in a mighty way, Lord. Strengthen their prayer life, Lord. Draw them closer to you, Father. Lift up their bow down here in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Father. Lead and guide them, Father, throughout the rest of the week. Father, Lord, go with them to their home, Lord. Help them on their job, Lord. Lord, if they in the hospital, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. Strengthen them. Take them off their sick bed, Lord. Give them a mind to be right up Lord Jesus touch the activities of they limb in the mighty name of Jesus Lord speak life into their dead situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray amen 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 so um that's all I have for now but until next time as we do series 8 it's your grandma Melissa God bless